Today, we will take you on a visit to one of the lovely places in Bahrain to have a look and to learn about the history and archaeology of the Kingdom of Bahrain. This place is Kalat al Bahrain Site Museum. It was opened in 2008, three years after the inscription of the site on the World Heritage List in 2005. The official name of the site is Kalat al Bahrain, ancient harbor and capital of Dilmun. It is the ancient capital of Dilmun civilization, and you know. Delmon is one of the most important ancient civilizations in the region. The site is an exceptional example of more or less unbroken continuity of occupation over a period of almost 4,500 years, from about 2,300 BC to the 16th century. The archaeological excavation at the site revealed six archaeological layers, called them cities. So we have six cities in the site. City number one and two date back to the early Delmon period. City number three to the middle Delmon and city number four to the late Delmon. Then we have city number five to Tylus period. And the last one is the Islamic city. 500 objects are exhibited in the museum. Most of them are discovered from the site. This museum is designed in a way that the visitor can trace the archaeological layers, starting from the earliest Dilmun exhibition on the lower level and then going up to the Islamic period exhibition. The main element of this museum is the Tel Wall. All the objects in the museum laid out around it. This 30 meter long wall recreates the archaeological strata of the site. The early Dilmun period was the era of Bahrain's economic prosperity in the ancient time. During this period, Dilmun had become an important trading crossroads between Mesopotamia, Indus region, Magan, Persia, and Eastern Arabia. All the artifacts displayed in this showcase reflect the diversity in a trade and economic exchange between Bahrain and its neighbors in that period. We see the copper ignots from Oman, Magan, and United Arab Emirates, the fissiles of the soft stone from Persia, a cup from the Indus Valley, a cylindrical seal from Mesopotamia. Here we see objects with different shapes. These are weights used in the ancient time for the commercial exchange with goods. These objects or these weights reflect the cultural and commercial relation with other civilizations in the region. We have here the square weights are from the Indus region, the spindle is from the Mesopotamia, and the rounded shape from Dilmun. Now, we finished with the era of early Dilmun and we will move forward going up to the second level in the museum, which is Middle Dilmun period or the third city. Two or three centuries after the decline of early Dilmun period, the third city was established here in the site after it was occupied by the Kassite. Kassite dynasty took control of Babylonia and Mesopotamia and they controlled the island of Bahrain and they reconstructed the city over the ruins of the second city of early Delmon. The oldest madbasa in Bahrain was found among the remains of this city. It's about 3,500 years. 
the madbasa is the place that the people store the dates and they produce the syrup from these dates. The Kassite period didn't last long in Bahrain. A massive fire destroyed the city. But after approximately 400 to 500 years, the fourth city was founded, perhaps by the Dilmonite king Opiri, who ruled Bahrain at the end of the 8th century BC. We know of him by the official inscription of the great new Assyrian king Sarjon II, who in his Mesopotamian palace often mentioned the gifts he received from this very diplomatic ruler of Dilmun. In one of the halls of the King Opery Palace here in Kalat al Bahrain, approximately 200 terracotta figurines were found. Perhaps it was used for purposes related to ritual worship. It dates from the period 10th to 7th century BC. At the end of the late Dilmun period, we observe that at Kalat al Bahrain, the dead and the living were close neighbors. Children buried in small earthware jars as well as many adults buried in pit graves or in a clay bathtub coffin, which have been discovered under the floor of the dwellings. About 50 snake plates discovers in holes cut into the plaster floors of the several rooms of the fourth city in Kalat al-Bahrain. These represent one of the most spectacular discoveries of the late Dilmun phase. It is a kind of sacrificing. The snakes were apparently first placed, possibly alive, in cloth bags, then buried underneath the floor. This unique evidence could be just the result of domestic practices, destined to bring divine protection, fertility, and long life to the inhabitants. Now, let me take you to have a look on one of the hoard discovered in the fourth city at Kalat al-Bahrain. It is a pottery jar, so-called silversmith hoard. It was hidden under the floor of the luxurious resident built in the center of the site. But one of the most interesting objects in this hoard is the silver ring with hieroglyphic script. The inscription was clumsily engraved and is unreadable. This ring could have been made in Bahrain as imitation of original jewelry imported from Egypt. Now we can go forward and going up to the third level of the museum. It is the Tylos period. Around 325 BC, the island of Bahrain is accosted by one of the Alexander the Great's maritime expeditions, henceforth known as Tylus. Let me take you now to have a look on the second treasure found in Kalat al-Bahrain, but this time it was found in the fifth city which is dated back to the Tylus period. Actually, it is one of the most significant discoveries of the Tylos phase in Bahrain. A jar contains approximately 310 silver coins. These are imitation of the official coinage of the Alexander the Great, which are used in the Seleucid Empire. These were might be minted during the second century BC by a regional workshop here in this area. This coin hoard found by the Danish expedition archaeological team in 1970 and all of these coins represent on the front the Alexander portrayed as Heracles and on the reverse a seated figure represents Shams or Shemesh who was the principal divinity worship then in Eastern Arabia. In the 7th century AD, most of people in Bahrain converted to Islam. 
The main town of Bahrain was then in the center of the island, around the mosque of Souk al Khamis, in a place known today as Bilad al Qadim. But in the 13th century, the old Tylos fortress, which is overlooking the sea at the Kalat al Bahrain site, which was built in 3rd century AD and abandoned around 5th century, was reconverted into a commercial warehouse by the Salgarid Atapics of Faris. Eight Madbasa at the fort then permitted 15,000 kg of date honey to be produced and exported to China yearly. On the return trip, the ships brought back spices, but more importantly, pottery from China and is India, as well as Chinese currency. At the end of the 13th century, a new village have developed rapidly over the large portion of the site. A souk, a big hammam, a mosque, a cemetery, have been uncovered by the successive teams of archaeologists. But in the course of the 15th century AD, a new first fortress was erected on the site and it is successive enlargements completely covered or destroyed this village. I'm talking about the Hormuzi Portuguese fort, which we call it Bahrain Fort. Now, this holds the last level of the museum exhibit objects discovered from the site. It's cover a period extended from the 13th to the 16th century AD. Different objects from different materials, glass, pottery, ceramics, metals, weapons such as stone cannonballs or fire, grenade. 